Analog just reopened pre-orders on their DAC, and many people wanted to know, will it work with an HDMI splitter? Let's find out. Before I begin, I just want to start out by saying that this video is strictly talking about using the analog consoles and the DAC. Now, I don't want to confuse anybody and think I'm talking about basic HDMI switching, and if that's what you're here for, I could answer it very quickly. The HDMI output of the analog consoles can be used with almost any splitter or switch out there. There's always a chance of some weird compatibility thing, but generally speaking, just the output of these should be fine. And even if you're going from the console to the DAC into some kind of dual output solution into a processor, like the OSSC or Tink2x SCART, then anything that you use at the end of that chain will function the same as well. What this video is strictly focused on is trying to put splitters or switches between the DAC and the analog consoles themselves, just to simplify a setup or try to squeeze a couple of extra features out that may or may not have been intended. So hopefully I didn't confuse anybody in the title. Let's jump right into how to make these work together and see what else we can do with this thing. The analog DAC is a device that allows for a single output of either composite, S-video, component, or RGB video. This device uses the HDMI port, meaning that dual output isn't supported, and it should be compatible with all analog products such as the Mega SG, the Super NT, and hopefully future products. This device works by communicating with the analog console as it's powering on, telling it to switch to DAC mode. As long as your console is on the latest firmware, there really aren't many things to worry about. Just plug it in, connect your analog output cable, and power everything on. And that's pretty much it. It just sits between the console, power supply, and CRT display. Ever since the initial announcement of the DAC, one question always seems to come up. How do you handle setups that have both RGB monitors and an HDMI device, such as a capture card or just a regular TV? I really wanted to put that to the test, and I kind of had my theories about what would happen, so I started with the easy one, a mechanical 1 to 2 switch that is not a splitter, it's just simply a push button switch that allows you to select between HDMI device 1 or HDMI device 2. Now, if you hook up both displays and you put this switch between the DAC and the analog device, all you have to do is power it on and it'll go to the second display. I'd make sure the console was always powered off when switching, as it sets the output signal when it's booting. That means if you power it on before setting the switch, it'll go to a normal HDMI mode, and the DAC won't work until you power cycle again. As a note, the DAC seems to work fine with longer HDMI cables, meaning if you use a switch like this, you could take advantage of the clean digital signals and only use the shortest analog cable possible to connect the DAC to your CRT. Now this two to one mechanical switch should have another use in that you should be able to use the Mega SG and Super NT both behind this switch, just flipped around of course, going to the DAC. And that means if you have a separate area, like maybe you have an RGB monitor set up with these analog consoles that you plan on using, you could only purchase one DAC and either not swap cables back and forth or just make it a quick button push. This should be more consistent on mechanical switches, since they're essentially the same as unplugging and replugging HDMI cables. As you can see here, as long as we boot with the correct console selected, we could even swap between consoles. It seems to work great, actually. I also wanted to try a digital, non-mechanical switch. The one I have here works as long as you're able to boot with the correct console selected, and, like the mechanical switch, you could even toggle between the two. Now, other people have tried the same thing and not gotten it to work with their switch, so I'd only suggest using a digital switch if you already have one to try, or if you have more than two consoles which you'd like to use with the DAC. And at the moment, there are only two out there that are compatible, so I'd be safe and stick with a mechanical one, at least for now. There's a few more things I wanted to try before this video is over, and this one might seem a little bit weird, but I'm gonna try it anyway. My hope was that if I used an HDMI splitter, not a switch, but one of those digital splitters that splits one signal to two, that I might be able to get dual 240p output of the analog console. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not how this works. I'm pretty sure when the DAC is active, some kind of custom signal is being sent, but I want to try it anyway, because it would be pretty easy for a streamer 
to be able to take a digital 240p signal and scale it in OBS or XSplit any way that they'd like, and then of course have that other 240p signal go to their analog monitors. Um, I did try to set that up, and I tried plugging it in in every order that you would imagine. I tried every power-up combination, and while once I was able to get 1080p on one monitor, uh, but nothing on the other, of course, uh, that was the only real progress I made. So at this time, I wouldn't expect any chance of getting dual 240 output in this scenario. One last thing I wanted to mention is Sega 32X support. And even though that has nothing to do with switches or splitters, it's a question that was bound to come up, so I figure I might as well take a quick moment to show exactly how that works. With some custom parts, such as this plastic spacer from laserbear.net, and a custom cable from RetroAccess, you could actually fit the 32X onto this and route the output of the DAC to the input of the 32X, and then just take the composite or RGB output of the 32X into your monitor. It works pretty good, and it's worked for me plenty of times before, but my 32X died again, which is a problem I've been having for a long time, so this is just showing a ROM playing for a visual cue. But at least you can see exactly what it takes to set this up, and know that you have a pretty cool way to play 32X now. So it looks like a mechanical switch is the easiest way to implement switching with use of the DAC in both scenarios I showed. Digital switches are hit or miss though, and don't count on splitters working pre-DAC. I would have liked to have also tested HDMI matrix switchers for the scenario of multiple analog consoles going between the DAC and other HDMI devices, but I didn't have access to any at the moment, and it should be pretty hit or miss just like digital switches might be. So if you happen to know of one that'll work, maybe let us know in the comments. But for now, I'm pretty sure mechanical switch between two devices is probably the safest bet for any of these scenarios. Other than not being able to have dual output, the only other real complaint I have about this device is no optical audio output. For the scenario of people that want to game on a CRT, but listen to the audio through clean digital audio into a stereo. But overall, that's certainly not a deal breaker. And my end suggestion for anybody looking into the DAC is just take a look at your whole scenario and see if it's the best fit for you, both for price, based on other consoles you already own, cables, and the entire setup itself. And if you do decide that it's for you, know that you're buying something that's gonna put out a great quality signal that's gonna perform exactly the way you hope. If you liked what you saw here, please consider signing up for any of the support services like Floatplane or Patreon, because your support is what keeps research and videos like this, as well as the weekly podcast going. And please check that out too if you haven't had a chance to yet. It's a podcast that tries to keep everybody in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. It airs every Wednesday, both on video and on any podcast audio platform out there. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.